to you what a, what a TED Talk is or, or what a TEDx Talk is. And I want to start that by asking you, do you remember your first? Because I certainly do. I was living in Europe at the time, doing one of my favorite pastimes, which is spending copious amounts of time on the internet and social media. And I stumbled across a Jill Bolte Taylor talk, probably one of the most watched TED talks of all time, called My Stroke of Insight. And later night, I watched this talk and I was absolutely stunned to see somebody being really human, talking about something really personal, yet with an incredible amount of authenticity and credibility. You know, a neuroanatomist standing there talking about how she feels and giving you an idea worth spreading. And that really had a profound impact on me when I realized what the platform TED could actually be. Anybody else remember their first, or one of their first, if it's not the exact one, and want to tell us which one it was and what your thoughts were once you realized exactly what TED is? Yeah. Um, I actually was uh, <laughs> <coughs> listening to my, my first TED talk was half-time shoelaces. Oh. Well, yeah. <laughs> what I loved about it was that I've been doing my shoelaces for 30 years at the time. Uh, suddenly when I've been doing something one way my whole life, and if I just change one thing, everything else changes. And that was my reaction. And it's just really well from there. Great. And I'm imagining you used, or she used, the idea of how, how to tie your shoelaces as an analogy for uh, adapting something. Not just a simple, here we are. Just, just, just this is how to tie your shoelaces if you do the wrong one. Ah, there you go. <laughs> I, my, I don't know if it was my first one, but uh, I think it's the most popular TED Talk of all time by Sir Ken Robinson. Yes. Um, she said it was amazing, and I was, I was teaching at UCT at the time, and I just like I found every excuse to bring it into plot. <laughs> and I think what struck me about it is that it was partly stand-up comedy and storytelling, and that really struck me as, you know, like someone working in a fairly academic environment, you know, where kind of bullet points all were there. Um, and it was just so extraordinary that you could tell a story and reach and connect with people on a personal level without having to be overly serious and still have that impact. Yes, definitely. How, how schools kill creativity. Exactly. Yeah. I remember that talk. If you haven't seen it, I insist you leave this room today <laughs> and watch it because it's exactly that. It's hysterical. Not to say that every today's talk has to be hysterical, but quite authentic to himself. He's naturally very funny and the idea is it's fantastic. We've been talking about is that a TED talk is really about an idea, a very distilled idea to use Justin's word, and that it's got quite a profound impact on the audience in the sense that it's really deliberate with quite a bit of passion and certainly very planned and, and rehearsed. And that that audience is not necessarily just the people sitting in the room, but as we all watch TED Talks and we play them in office and we launch other events with the TED Talk, it's something that actually has the specific intention of having longevity and being rewatched over time. So, before we talk about what a TED Talk isn't, Let's talk about exactly what a TED Talk is. I've heard some lovely words, I've heard storytelling, I've heard passion. If you want to just throw those back at me so that you can actually see really exactly what we believe a TED Talk to be. Any new words? Honestly. Right. It's very, it's very honest. It's about honesty. Mm -hmm. What else? Sharing. It's about sharing. Very good. Pardon me? Right. Yes, you have to be super great. So personal. It's very personal, exactly. At the essence perhaps of every TED talk is how 
the message is embedded in something highly personal. Inspiring? Eminently. Absolutely thought provoking and inspiring. And although well, perhaps the way a TikTok is crafted is not necessarily with the intention of inspiring, it's not an inspirational talk like you would hear a motivational speaker, but just the nature of the passion, the idea itself, the demonstration of somebody living out what they believe by knock on effect is inspiring. Thought provoking, absolutely, the main intention I would say. They may not call me, but I think everyone I see is quite humble. Yes, they, they it's are. Like it's not like about themselves. Mm. Yeah, it's like ego aside, kind of evangelism aside, agenda aside, it's really just about the idea, just a, a desire to get it across. Mm -hmm. But, simple. Yes, it's about sheer simplicity. Kind of cutting away from all the detail and just getting to the essence or the distilled version of a concept so that it can be so transferable and easily transmitted. And sometimes it's a call to action as well. Yes, you can have a call to action to, to initiate action. And obviously we've spoken about the fact that we all have watched it online. So there's something intrinsic about the way that a TED talk is designed is that it's filmed and it's distributed again and again. So there's this, this really watchable quality to it. For example, the Brene Brown TED talk asked probably what I'm completely honest with you, I've watched it like 50 times. Sure. Like literally. I played in some of the other contexts as well, in the work environment. I'm literally, I label myself as a TED evangelist. Because if you haven't seen a TED talk that I think you should see, you're like, hey, link on your wall. You really, this is great. Like, you have to, you have to see it. So there's this, this production-like quality to, to a TED talk. It's like a performance, really. relevant, something you can relate to, even if you haven't been in that situation? Yes, exactly. The kind of related to, to the simplicity is the, the yeah, kind of relatable. Relatability. Yeah. What was the first word you said? Relative. Relevant. Relevant. Saturday morning brain freeze. <laughs> <laughs> Start that morning. Uh, Are you? Yeah. Yeah. There we go. It's been a long week. Anything else? Okay, so I, I, I agree. I think it's all these things. It can be transformational, it can be a platform to, to inspire action. Yeah, I think it's an opportunity. Yeah, sure. That's an nature. It's not everyone, Yeah, an opportunity naturally for the speaker for all the reasons that, that Andrew was just, but for an opportunity for someone who otherwise wouldn't have access to a platform like that, like Justin said in the beginning, people who aren't paying big um, fees to certain conferences and be inspired by people who can do amazing things. You can do it in your lounge, 10 o'clock at night, and when you get lost in the wormhole of the interwebs. You know, like anybody can see it if they have some sort of device and an internet connection. Thank goodness for those. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I think. I think we've kind of got out of definitely everyone in the room has their head in here about the potential of a TED talk and the essence of it. But now let's consider what it isn't, because there's definitely a lot of things that a TED talk isn't. And I'd like you, you've all got a, a 
a notepad in front of you. Just write a list of all the things that the TED Talk absolutely isn't. Simply not a sales pitch, but rather if you are talking about something that you do that actually can be sold or bought or, or rented or whatever, it's about the concept or, or the idea that, that's shared. And, and you can't strip, you can strip all that away. What else? It's not a platform to share negative ideas or any form of negativity in terms of what you're sharing. Say more. Can you think of the... Um, for example, let's say you're a warmonger, something terrible like that. Oh, right. Yeah, it's not like a platform to <laughs> 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 negative uh, attack on anyone or anything. Yes, so, good, yeah. great. That's, that's really at its essence too. It doesn't sort of cry. So it doesn't sort of, it doesn't sort of cliche to it this like amazing well thought out punchline. And then you stand at the end and you say, well, <laughs> so, so it's certainly not that to my mind. Okay, and I wouldn't find the right word, but it's not, I don't know, the rating sounds too much like storytelling, which it is, but it's not. It's not your typical PowerPoint presentation of just dryness, but just someone speaking at you without yes. any definitely. It's not a lecture. Yeah. yeah. So it's more interactive. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Justin was going to say something? No, so it's not actually a talk, even though we call it a TEDx talk. It's not a talk, it's a production. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. So just to come back to that contrast point, I think the word of authenticity came out here, but there is certainly there's a serious sense of authenticity and that comes to storytelling and embedding an idea in a personal context in some way. But there's certainly a serious level of preparation. And I'm sure Angela can attest to that. But my wife can attest to that. <laughs> <laughs> she hasn't listened to it twice a day for I think three months. Yeah. Which is Literally, the level, the gear that you need to get your mind into, and you realize that those people who stand there and have so carefully considered how they're going to pierce you, literally, with something. Because that's sometimes how it feels. You arrive, and somebody says something in such a way that it's now inside you. And that doesn't happen spontaneously. But yet, at the same time, it needs to come across with all of these natural things so that you don't dislike the person because they seem so contrived. Mm -hmm. It's naturally rehearsed. It's naturally rehearsed, exactly. Uh, on Wednesday, for the Wednesday session, we had a second past speaker, Karen Dudley from the kitchen, who spoke about something so simple as making a sandwich and used a metaphor of that or service as a gift of love. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it was spectacular and I remember I was in the audience and she stood and she described the chicken and the sauce and, and she spoke about that on Wednesday evening. Okay, now we've got a, a license to do a two-day event. The second day is not your presentation talking, it's going to be hands-on, more engagement workshops, facilitated and discussions. And that's again lining up with what we're trying to do as a brand, to as kept on, and as a team is get the talks, but now let's, now let's delve into the complexity behind the ideas, uh, which is pretty important, and this is one step towards that. Yeah. And then. Sorry, that last bit. Well, who, who, who's doing the work? So we're busy putting it together. It's going to range from some of our current speakers speaking at this year's event, do they want to add something else and do on day two? It's engaging with all our past speakers. For instance, um, I'll set up on open streets. We get a whole bunch of our attendees to go on bicycles and go do open streets in town. We'll get all the uh, characters out, do retail police, and maybe walk through the, the, the sewers of, of Cape Town. So it's those sort of things where we've now got amazing speakers, we're all doing wonderful projects. This will you know, get people engaging around that. So it's almost going to be like a weekend of amazingness. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. <laughs> yeah. And then, 
So the uh, reason why I'm up here is I want to talk about commitments. Um, this is something that we really take seriously. Um, we are great fun, having a good time and very relaxed in a lot of senses, but one thing where we absolutely draw the line is that we require, we actually to demand um, your commitments. If you're going to be participating with the events this year, and you're going to bring, we're going to be, as a team, we're going to bring a lot of time and energy into you, we expect nothing less but that in return. And there's two folds to it. One is out of respect for the team and for the efforts we're putting into it. But secondly, out of respect to yourself and to the audience. We've seen them again and again and again. The speakers that put the most time and effort into it, got the most out of it, and their talk was the best. And particularly now, where we really have to drill down to a select few speakers, the last thing we will do is give somebody a slot if they don't have that commitment. Um, yeah. So it's, it's just something I want to mention, like most people in this space don't come with that. Um, about anyway, but it is just something that we need to be aware of. Any other points that you'd like to highlight? Um, yeah, I think that you want to get some clarity on, or any other questions? Could I, sorry, so Tamron, good question as well. But just before, so I don't know if you're thinking of this. If you can't be here in person, and that's why we're recording this, it's all right as long as you let us know. And let's say you're going to do a pitch, it's very easy to put a camera in front of yourself and do that pitch. Um, so if you can't be in your physical presence, let us know, because we're less interested in the fact that are you here right now, as opposed to are you doing what we need you to do in order to prepare for your talk. Um, tell me about wonderful um, speaker coaches in Joburg, um, who are going to be assisting our Joburg guys, if you're in Cape Town. If you, let's say you're overseas, eh? so let's say you're over in the UK, that you let us know, I can reach out to the TEDx London guys, I can find your coach. But I need to know that you're not here, you let us know, and you're willing to work around it. And we, we're willing to... To work with you on that, as long as we know at the end of the day you've got that commitment. Yeah.